It's a pretty girl. It's pretty flat. It's been in there like a week. So, see? Didn't even do anything. I think I could... I'm going to find other places to find this. I don't like the only... Well, it's the only one place you can get. I found it so far. But they still have you wait, wear a mask. So I'm like, fuck that. I ain't doing it. <laughs> I don't need... So, but Augie, he, he does it. So I'll buy a pack of cigarettes and he'll go in and get me a couple of those. <laughs> it works out kind of nice. I asked another gas station today up the road if they would if they would talk to their distributor about getting that. So I could get it there. Because I don't got to wear a mask there and... The lady's like, we do it for our elders, and I, I fuck it, I get, that's like, everything triggers me, man. <laughs> I get everything does. I, I, I just go, K -k 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 elders? Taking care of the fucking elders? Is that why you wear a mask? When's the last time you fucking went to go see your grandma? When's the last time you washed an elder's feet? When's the last time you cooked a meal for an elder? When's the last time you fucking did something for an elder? You're fucking telling me I gotta wear a mask to go in for a fucking elder? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm just like, don't even say that shit to me. You know, when's the last time you washed an elder's feet? Because I washed my mom's feet today. When'd you, wa when, when'd, you, when'd you wash an old lady's feet? Oh, you probably never washed an old lady's feet because you're too good for that. These fucking people. These fucking people using the words, but they don't got no action, Ma. They don't do nothing. I was talking to Augustine about that today. I said, this world ain't going to get better because ain't nobody's accountable. Very few people are accountable. The good news is, <laughs> I have a history of accountability. A whole history of it, Ma. A whole long line of history of being accountable, telling on myself, taking responsibility for my own actions, even if I got in trouble. Remember when I was two years old and I stole those little bullets out of the thrifties? You guys were like getting scoops of ice cream. I went over to the toys and there was a little package open. I was probably three. And I put the bullets in my mouth. They were rubber. I was chewing on them. And we left the, the thrifties. And Dan said, what did you do? What, what, where did you get those? What's in your mouth? Then I spit them out. And he made me go back in and give them to the manager and tell the manager that I took them without paying for them, that I stole them and I was very sorry and I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't steal nothing else until I was 15. And then I wanted some money, but I didn't have, nobody would hire me. And I went to, we went to Dr. Goder's office because I broke my glasses all the time. And there were some sunglasses there that were name brand, Esprit, Esprit sunglasses. And I took those and I sold them at school for 30 bucks, right? So they were, they were probably $40, $50 sunglasses, but this was back in 1990. Okay, long time ago. So when, and then, and then, and then I felt bad and I, I didn't take stuff anymore. I was just like, that's not the kind of person I want to be, right? And then what happens is, because everybody can make mistakes. Human beings make mistakes. The thing is, is we're not supposed to keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Yet, the world is the way it is because people keep doing the same thing over and over and thinking that there's going to be a different result. <laughs> like there's going to be a different outcome and that just, that ain't happening right now. So when it was wearing on me real good, I told Augustine this story today, Mom. That's why it's so fresh in my mind. Because I told Aug uh, is uh, when I decided I wanted to, to turn my life over to a power that's greater than me and that is is God <laughs> good orderly direction do the right thing you know just to be clarify <laughs> and uh, I don't want to I didn't want to act the way that I used to act so I remember I wrote a letter to Dr. Goder and I said Dr. Goder you were always very kind to us because we never had any we didn't have a lot of money and I was always really hard on glasses and there was a lot of because we we're on Medi-Cal you know and there's a lot of times that he would repair the glasses just to repair them without the consequence, right? Without charging you, you know? And so I sent him a check, and this is like in 2002 for 
for like 75 bucks because of for the price of the glasses like if I would have done it today 10 years later right they would have become more expensive I say you are as good as I said I said I'm trying to be a better person I don't want to live the way that I've lived in before so if you let me know if I owe you need to owe you more if, if I owe you more money to make it right please let me know and Dr. Gar it was, it was he was re he had long since retired but I look up Dr. Goder and it was like his, his child or his cousin or some relative that took over his office. Oh, okay. And so they gave it to him and he wrote me back and said, paid in full. Really? Yeah. See, it's okay if people make mistakes. It's okay if people screw up. The thing of it is, is that you got to decide you're going to keep doing that behavior or you're going to live different. And when you live different, then you, that you decide to live something outside of yourself instead of just for you to make yourself feel good, to satisfy your own gratifications, to uh, all that superficial crap, wow. right? Wow. So the world ain't going to start changing until more people start becoming accountable for this shit. See, see, there's too much spiritual bypassing in AA. I went to AA for a number of years, and there's too many fucking people that did really shitty things, but since they told their sponsor... Then their sponsor decides if they got to turn them to turn the people in to the cops to make it right. Right? Yeah. How many people don't? Cuz I don't hear a lot of a lot of people in AA going to jail, but I know a lot of these people have done some really shitty things. Heck, I know three people that have killed people that have never that they haven't done jail time from alcohol related incidents. You know? I know one girl, she freaking she killed a girl when she was 50, she was like 16. No, she was like 20. But the girl she killed was 15. And she, yeah, because she was driving drunk. And she, she, she like had to do a weekend. No, I take that back. She did have to do weekends in jail on the anniversary for like the weekend. So like three week for like three years after she had died. After the girl died, after the, 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 the like on the weekend of the anniversary, she had to spend the weekend in jail. I mean, it's like, it's absurd. And she has a great life, you know, two beautiful kids, you know. But where is the, where is the, too many people do nasty stuff and then go on with their lives like nothing ever happened. So you have all this ill will and all this animosity just floating around the world from just this big old cloud of freaking injustice. All these people, Ma, you think, you think if freaking, if you would have pressed charges when Jerry's 18 and he freaking smacked you and cut your eye open, you think he'd be a fucking lawyer today? No, he would not be a fucking lawyer today, right? But he doesn't want people to know about that. You know, there's no record of it. He would say, there's no record of it, except for the scar and me as a witness. But, you know, then he comes back and says, oh, she's, cr she's always gotten, been very emotional. She's been very emotional. <laughs> and I can go on and explain all the reasons why I'm emotional. Yeah, I can do that. But they use it as something to hold against you instead of taking responsibility for smacking his mom around. But now he's a big, important lawyer. Makes 156000 a year. Think, how do you think his boss would feel about that? How, how do people, how do you think his daughters would respond? Then? How do you think his wife, because I promise you, he has never mentioned it to anybody. I promise you he's never mentioned slamming my head into the ground. Probably nobody. But these are things that happen. And this is what, when people don't have emotional control, they can act like it all day long. They can put themselves in situations that they're always comfortable. And they're never uncomfortable. But you put these people in uncomfortable situations, <laughs> they lose their shit. And we're seeing it everywhere. Everywhere. I was talking to um, Mr. Iskey the other day, and I was like, Mr. Iskey, because he knew me. Mr. Iskey knew me in 2000 when I first got to off it. I didn't get the freaking shots until 2000. So he's, he knew me before those. He's known me for 20 years. So when I tell him, I'm like, Mr. Iskey, I said, it's like I don't have control over my emotions. I have control over my body because for years I've been putting, I, you, mom's been driving into my head, emotional control, emotional control. 
you don't put your hands on people out of anger or even friendly. You don't know if the person doesn't like to be touched. You don't touch people unless you ask permission. And there's just all these common courtesies, these basic little freaking things that people they don't care. Why? Why would they care? You know, common courtesies are just not common. You know, it's not like there's freaking, it's not like they teach you ethics in school, right? It's not like that's the case at all. You know, what, what do they teach? What do they teach? I don't even know what they teach kids in school these days. I, from, the word on the street is they're trying to freaking get it so, uh, I don't know, they're talking about sex ed with kids that are really young. It's weird. It's pervy. It's creepy. There's just, ugh. Like, like it's a teacher's role to teach a kindergartner about the birds and the bees? Are you kidding me? Ah. What are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, so when I was talking to him, I said, Mr. Iski, it's like, you know, and, and uh, it's like, hold on a second. I hate this song. As a matter of fact, I think it's time to delete the album. I look at my, I look at my um, shuffleboard my playlist is as a uh, a time capsule and sometimes in the time capsule you got to take stuff out cuz it's it just don't it's not in alignment anymore and i don't like that album anymore so there it's gone done so but that's what we're seeing more of and i this was kind of an interesting example i went to the coffee shop this morning and There was a young man there that I'd never seen before. And he came over. It was me, Turtle, Augustine. He came over to where we were. And he talked really fast. And I was really, I wasn't even like, he walked up. I looked at him in the eye. I was like, hey, what's up? And then he asked people for a cigarette. So I don't smoke cigarettes. And then, uh, and then this guy was like, I only have one left. This guy, he don't share. <laughs> So, uh, so it kind of like heated him, like it triggered him and he got annoyed. And then he asked people if he offered some sort of service, but I didn't understand the word that he said. I'm like, was it recce? I don't know what he was. But anyway, the guy had his own, he was on his own frequency. And what he, I, I was really, really trying to track what he was saying. I honestly was. I was really trying to be attentive so I could get an idea where he was coming from. What I, but he wasn't saying anything. And he was young, mom. He was like, I don't, I'm freaking terrible at judging A's. Maybe in his, at the oldest in his 30s. Yet. He was just, and what he was in, he was, he, he wasn't making any sense. Like, I, I couldn't make sense out of anything that he was saying. And then Augustine gave him his last cigarette. Or he, he started smoking it, and then he took a couple drags and then gave him the rest. Right? And then he kept going on and on. And then I was just like, this is what we're going to get this is what the world is heading into. It's because people are frying themselves in all kinds of ways. All kinds of ways. Even the stoners, man. I mean, even it's just... It's, that's why everything in moderation. Everything is in moderation. When energies are like they're feeling right now, I don't even like doing flour because I'm already up here. You yeah. know? It was kind of cool. And in the, in, 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 on the note of accountability, <laughs> um, it's good to know yourself, especially on the energies like this weekend. So I went out this morning. I am going out tomorrow. Well, maybe I will go out tomorrow because everyone will be busy. So maybe I'll go for a drive for an hour or something like that. 
just because I like when on when it's when people are off doing other stuff and it's that it's that pagan holiday <laughs> to chase the white rabbit tomorrow. It's so stupid, man. <laughs> anyway, whatever. But um, it's just so dumb. But so, uh, and I miss out because I wanted to make my own tradition where I sent my nieces a Sunday dress every Easter. But of course, I don't get to know where my nieces live, so <laughs> I don't get to send them anything ever. It's fucking stupid, man. Control freaks. That's why it's like I know so much about control freaks because I've been surrounded by them, and I dislike them so much that however they are, I don't want to fucking be anything like them. I don't want to be anything like them. And you know what's a trip? Is that I find that I am like these people. I just, like, 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 here's a funny story. I hadn't seen Jerry in a couple of years. We got together, right? We came to visit. We had the same shoes. The same dress shoes. He got his in Sacramento. I got mine in Omaha, Nebraska. We come together, we wear the same shoes. You know? But that's the D-bag in me <laughs> recognizes the D-bag in him. Then I'll take that out and I'll see randomly see people with these shoes. I'm like, oh, okay. That's the D-bag in me that recognizes the D-bag in them. <laughs> um, yeah, here's a kind of a weird thing that happened when I got home today. There was a, one of the cats that had kittens on the porch, Tango's oh sister. Oh Tango's baby sister. They were litter mates. The landlord, when I moved in here, she asked if I would feed the cats outside because they eat the, get the rodents and stuff. So I was like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> sure. And it's turned, they've like doubled. They're about, they're like quadrupling now. I'm just like, I got, I get roped into shit, man. Just because I fucking, just because I take care of stuff, you know? So I was, so this, this little girl cat, she's been coming, she's been eating like for the last week, she'll, she's Tango's sister, so I'm like, well, if she has them outside, they got less of a chance to survive, right? Because things will get them. Yes. So I freaking got a box and put the towel that was on the chair in the box, put on some rubber gloves. So I don't know if they're like birds. If they smell the person, you know, they might deny it kind of thing. So... And there was, like, one that was rolled off that was in the sun. Like, she she just had had him. She's not even, like, like, she had, uh, so yeah, she's only less than a year. She's about a year old now, too. So, so she just had him, and, and then um, I put her, or I put the four babies in the box, and then I put her in the box, closed the box lid, and she didn't fight me. I mean, she hissed a little bit, but I was trying to be as careful as I could. When I picked her up, because she just had babies, I didn't want to hurt her. Put her in the box and then put her in the shower in my bathroom back there and close the door. And I brought her some food, gave her some couple bites to eat. And then I took Artie out. This was like 20 minutes later, taking Artie out and freaking, I hear, meow, meow, meow. There's kid number five that was like twisted up in the blanket. So, <laughs> brought. <laughs> Picked up the cat, brought it in, little baby kitten, brought it in, and, and, and put her with mom. And uh, here's a little picture of her. Her mom is called Stink Face. And that's Lyle's. I think it was Lyle's. Lyle was killed after we moved here. Moved to here. But here you can see the little babies in the corner. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of interesting today. And I got to go see horses today. Oh. Horses. They're so cute, Mom. They, they're getting used to me when I show up. They come over and they let me pet them. That's the little one. That sucks I freaking blew that video because I was... I got... There was like... I, they did a really cute little horsey thing. <laughs> and I didn't get it on video because I was getting so excited. I put the phone down. <laughs> I was like, ah, horsey, horse ears, horse ears. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. 
What else? So it's been kind of a wild day. Wild day. Oh, I found this document where this is also in the in, in line with accountability and things like that. Largely, well, I think about it a lot. There's two kinds of people in the world. There's the kind of people that do this and the kind of people that do this. There's a lot more kinds of people in the world than that. But there's the kind of people that withhold, and there's the kind of people that let lo let go. You got the withholders, the helpers, and the hinderers. The helpers and the hinderers. Now, I was, try I was trying to explain to my buddy at the... Uh, coffee shop today that I look at money is like a gauge of people's emotions like if they feel bad a lot of times people use do retail therapy they don't live within their means they spend on spend money on their stuff that they can't afford these are all ways I've lived these are always the things that I've done in my life that I've learned not to do it's called discipline and a lot of people don't have it more people will find it I'm sure of it. I'm sure more people are going to find it. But right now, look around. Look at all the people that have discipline, all the people that don't. Look at all the people that can't take just, just, I mean, discipline is what? Taking care of yourself? Making sure that you're freaking, you don't stink? You now, there's been plenty of times in my life, you know how embarrassing that is when somebody tells you that you smell bad? Well, I don't get embarrassed anymore, but I used to. I used to, because when I, when I had, when I had a lot more, self-centered fear a lot of the self-centered fear that i used to have i freaking it doesn't it serve me any longer so but but i didn't i didn't get a lot of guidance that freaking people got from you know but i got guidance another way like like I, a lot of guidance that people aren't getting you now do our, our parents teaching their kids that you don't hit people you don't hit is that getting taught i don't know i don't have kids but if i had kids you don't put your hands on other kids you know, are, are kids learning how to calm themselves down? Or are parents, are parents they're calm? I, I would love it if parents would teach their children how to calm themselves down, how to go, <sighs> breath work. Is that, you know, breath work. Teaching your kids to meditate. You know, connect to something outside themselves. Yeah, is that happening more and more? I'm just curious. I mean, whether it is or not, it's neither here nor there. We all got a shelf life, man. We're all going to expire. You know, there's things in this lifetime I'd like to see. I'm, uh, it ne doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to see it. I never introduced myself. My name's Marge. I'm a Hayoka. Welcome to my tiny tube. Um, so, what else? I think that's about it. I just wanted to talk earlier because I get up about 4 35 o'clock in the morning by the time that I'm doing talks at five or six or seven in the evening I'm just not firing it on all cylinders <laughs> I'm just not <laughs> so but it was cool and all, when my buddy today he was talking about how they offered him a job these people offered him a job but he knows already knows what it would be like if he went to work there that one of these guys is a is a is a chump that works at the place they offered him a job, right? And so he has a, he has a, <laughs> he doesn't want to take it because he knows he'll probably get arrested because he knows how he gets along with the guy that works there. They probably end up punching him in the nose. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? That's what I like to hear about how people know themselves. There's days, man, I'm too fired up. I won't even go. I won't, I'll just stay home because the world is full of bullshit and I don't have all the time the freaking power in myself to not respond and so my you know, it's easier to stay out of a tr problem than to get out of a problem so nothing is that pressing nothing is that pressing and i know that other people are feeling this energy too see because that's the thing is i'm an asshole magnet i'm a magnet of assholes if there is an asshole in the room, he will address me in some kind of fashion. One thing that they like to do a lot, it's a power play. I know so much about power plays because these motherfuckers have been doing these power plays my whole... They'll walk at me at the grocery store. People will walk at me in the grocery store and they'll run into me. They'll bump off me. I won't bump off them. Oh, you didn't see me with my 
bright orange pants on. Didn't see me there, did ya? You know, people do all kinds of stuff. And that's the thing is I call them on it. I'll call them on it. I don't care. People think, people have always thought I was, she, she's crazy. No, it's because I call people on stuff and I know stuff. I get this psychic ability, this clairvoyancy, all this, these clairy ears, I got them all. I got the ability of telekinesis. I can move stuff with my energy field. And it's not just words that I'm saying. This has been done for people all over the United States. They can verify what I can do. I don't even have to say it myself. Man, this chick, she knocked a freaking lighter off my hand without touching it. It was freaking cool. You know? More people can do this stuff, but they just think, no, you can't. Do they can't do it because they'll just say, no, people can't do that. There's all kinds of stuff the human being can do. See that little blue light back here? This, maybe it's that one. It's one of these two lights. When the cat sits in there, doesn't matter which cat. I can pet on the cat I do with the static electricity and pet on the cat. With the lights unplugged, mind you, they're not plugged in from the wall. And our static electricity will make this light flicker. Yeah. You can see static electricity all over the place. All over the place. I see it all the time. Sparks everywhere. <laughs> when you have the eyes to see, it's amazing what you will see. It's amazing what people can see when they stop telling themselves that they can't see anything. So... And it's kind of, here's a, here's a synchronistic thing. I was watching Divided We Fall. <laughs> I, think I, I was going to hang out with the fun guy. There's new, there's new uh, advancements that they're doing. Because I, 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 I'm, I'm too old for all that trippy stuff. That's why I don't like hallucinating. I don't like ooh, frying balls and stuff like I did when I was a kid. Uh, I'm past that. Although... There's all these studies that they've done for depression and anxiety and things like that with psilocybin mushrooms. And I was like, all right, let's see about those. And I've, 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 I've done more than, more than, more than a, I would say, I don't know. I, I've, I ain't a rookie. <laughs> and so, um... But it's just like you just do like five, like 5.5 5 grams, like a half gram and, and freaking, and then it gives you the body effects and not the stuff. Cause I, I got too much stuff to do, man. I don't like, I, I gotta be grounded. <laughs> it's hard enough without any air or without any earth, man. It's, it's, I already have a hard enough time being grounded. <laughs> I have no, I have no problem admitting that, you know. All this air and water with some freaking a little fire. <laughs> what does that make? Steam. <laughs> oh, ma. <laughs> I was telling ma this morning. I said, ma, I said, it hasn't been easy being my mom, you know, because I was thinking about like the challenges and difficulties in my life, but then I think about the difficulties and challenges mom has had <laughs> just from me being me falling out of trees <laughs> getting electrocuted fences putting fish hooks through my tongue almost drowning all before i was what seven eight <laughs> i was hard to keep track of i was i'm a, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience you know Wanted to, and, and, and I wasn't really good at physics, but I've gotten a lot better at physics. <laughs> so, Zach made it. Hey, Maud, Zach made it. Um, yeah, I see I'm hypoglycemic. Fasting, I, and plus I don't have, I don't eat that much anyway. Like yesterday, what did I eat yesterday? I cooked some cabbage. Because mom, I'll make mom three scrambled eggs usually. She won't finish them. I'll eat a couple bites of eggs. You know, and then I had some cooked cabbage. I think at some point I had a half a, a bologna sandwich. But I don't, I don't eat a lot. Yeah, yeah, fasting is is great for for disciplining for as a great discipline. That's not my discipline. That's other people's discipline. 
<laughs> my discipline is physical fitness. Whether I want to or not, I'm freaking doing something to get my heart rate up. Maybe not 156, which is the target zone. Because I got a low heartbeat anyway, man. I remember freaking working out and having to keep my heart my heart rate at, 100, uh, at that for like as long as I can. Almost an hour, right? Which was not easy to even get my heart because it's always been so low. My, my, it's like, it's always been like 64 over 80, something like that, you know, 89, you know, low, low. And where they have to keep doing it over and over, like, like, is there stuff broke? No, I just, it's just me. Oh, <laughs> no, nothing is just anybody. <laughs> it's my device. Okay, but it's, it's only just, you know, eight people that have ever taken my blood pressure have all... <laughs> had to swap it out or, you know, readjust or do something, you know. Oh, people's lack of faith and belief. I tell you what, it's just uh, evident. It's evident every day. And you see it. You see it with just the stuff that they just exude their ego on. So, anyway... Managing your money is 10% actually managing money and 90% managing your emotions. What do you think about that, Ma? That's well put. Well. Right. Just that, and that's, that's, that goes hand in hand with you teaching us how to handle and manage our, and control our emotions because you would give us the power of how to spend the money. I'm sure you were going to, you know, like if we said, no, Mom, we want to eat a big meal, you'd say, no, you're getting a turkey pot pie for Thanksgiving. we got to eat the rest of the month. But still, you gave us those choices. Or you gave us, you know, or you made us go in and pay rent. You made us pay the bills. And you always drove into us. You pay the bills before you, you play. Responsibility first. And Greg was like that, too. He would have us come down. We were just child labor to him, man. That guy's such a douche. <laughs> fucking my dad. We'd go down there, spend fucking 11 hours on a bus to go down there so he'd have us do shit like clean out the garage when it was like 95 degrees down in Bakersfield. Oh, we clean up the garage. We'll go to the lake this afternoon. You never go. Nope. Never saw that lake. Jessica had, my sister had to, she, they had to put her down for a nap. And I was like, why would you put her down for a nap at 3.30 in the afternoon? We're supposed to be going to the lake. Because they never had any intention of taking us to the lake. It's just do this and you get that, but you never get that. And that's exactly how my brother the, is. You behave this way, Marge, and, you can, and th these are the crumbs you'll get. But he wouldn't give me the fucking crumbs. He said the words, I will never keep you from your, from your niece. He promised me that. And, what, and that's exactly what he did. That's how I know the mentality of these people that are in positions of power. I know them. Know them. I should have known the instant I, I, the, that he said that. I should have anticipated that he was going to, at some point, keep me from my niece. Keep me from having a relationship from my niece. He doesn't want his daughter to know what a fucking coward he is. He doesn't want his daughter to know how he never stuck up for his little sister. He doesn't want his daughter to know that. And that's how a lot of these fake people are, is they present to you how things are. You know, women with their makeup and their plastic surgery, they want you to think they're really pretty, but, and very confident in their abilities and things like that. Confident, pretty people do not do that. They just don't. I cannot be swayed. Nope. Never fucking go to sleep and have a fucking surgery hack on my face. I don't even know if I would have freaking, I had freaking like my face went through a windshield or something like that. I don't even know. God forbid that happened, huh, Mom? <laughs> 